<laughs> Alrighty, so my manager has asked me to make some uh, lactobacillus, some labs, or uh, they want to use some for some um, bee balm, some uh, powdery, powdery mildew on bee balm. So we're going to, uh, hmm, yes, we're going to take wheat berries, oh, that's, this is a reused bag, we're going to take wheat berries, um, you can get these at like health food stores, or uh, if you're in southern Oregon, these are at Winco, oops, this is what they look like. I'm making a big old mess. Okay, so um, we're going to start this by, um, there's a couple different ways to make lactobacillus. This process is going to begin by um, first making something called Rejuvalac out of the wheat berries. Um, I like it because I like to drink the Rejuvalac. The labs is, I don't like to taste the milk. Um, so, so rehydrate the wheat berries first and so we'll take like I like to take like you know your pint mason jar and yeesh put it in your quart and then come over and just put some water and these are going to sit overnight and uh rehydrate and uh, then we will sprout them and when they sprout then we will blend them and then we will submerge them in water and then we will ferment them and then we'll be ready for the second process which is actually making the labs um, so uh, this is a multi-day process today is what like the 10th or 11th or something like that um, so this will take a few days, uh, come back tomorrow, and these should all be swollen up. We'll actually probably put a little bit of water in there. All the way. Uh, um, that'll sit uh, with a breathable lid. And... Um, Take like half a paper towel. We'll end up reusing this multiple times throughout. But yeah, so this is gonna sit overnight. Okay, it is the next day, and um, we just gotta drain this uh, these wheat berries out really quick, um, and then we're gonna set them in our sprouting jar and uh, they will sprout over the next day or so um, so right here this is our sprouting jar um, got this at the at sunshine natural foods um, get them at a health food store or uh, you can probably order them online or before I had this I made my own um, I just use like uh, the um, the screen stuff from like a window I put and um, I would just put that over top of it and then screw um, one of the mason jar lids onto a mason jar and just use it that way. Um, so kind of like this, just put the screen over this and then screw the lid onto top of that. And then um, that would be that. Okay, so I'm going to drain this. This is what it looks like after they have reconstituted and are ready to sprout. So these um, are it. Uh, let me uh, drain this real quick. Okie dokes. So that is drained. And so they're going to go in here now. And then our lid. That's the mama cat right there. Hey, mamas.
Okay, and then they're just going to more or less going to stay like this, and um, they will start sprouting in this jar. Uh, it's what the breathable lid is for right here, and that way they can still get oxygen. So um, I keep this uh, right here on the sill, and uh, this is a south-facing window, so it gets a lot of sun. Um, but so it's going to sit right, yeah, right here, and. Um, you want to make sure that it stays moist in so inside the jar, um, not wet, but just enough so that way the seeds can sprout. And this will take about a day, maybe two. Um, just keep an eye on it, and um, I'll show you what it looks like when they start sprouting. Hi there. So it's the third day, um, the thirteenth, I believe, and um, just wanted to show real quick that. The, it's been 24 hours and the sprouts have already begun and I just wanted to show you what that looked like so you see the tails just starting to come out of these sprouts um, it was a sunny day today and so this uh, sill got pretty warm um, sunlight isn't necessary for uh, sprouts to um, sprout uh, but the warmth does um, help expedite the process a little bit. So um, I came home uh, on my lunch break because I forgot to uncover some flowers. So on my lunch break, I turned this over um, just to keep rotating it so that way there's no saturated spots in the uh, sprouting jar. So we'll just do that again. Kind of just give it a good turn. And whoops. Yeah, so. But. You know, so that's what they look like after 24 hours, and then um, we'll uh, more than likely tomorrow uh, tomorrow night we'll be um, putting these in the blender and just kind of chopping them up real good, and uh, then putting them in a jar to ferment um, in in a jar of water. Um, yep. Okay, so I've been getting my dates wrong. Today is the 16th, and this is like what is this day three or four now? Um, so this is day three or four, and it's actually the 16th today. And so what we are doing is we are taking our wheat berries, which have now sprouted really, really well. Um, I probably could have done these last night, but I was exhausted, and so we're doing them now. Um, so no big deal. Uh, it is what it is. Um, with a lot of these things, they do get time sensitive, and so it's important to do them um, when you're supposed to, but it's also important to be realistic with yourself and just do the best that you can. And it's better to have your inputs be a little off than say to just like, like I have some supposed to be doing right now. I have a hen I need to go take care of. Uh, but this needs to get taken care of, and if I let this go too much longer, it's going to be bad. So I might as well just do it now, where it's a little bit, a little bit too sprouted, but still totally good. Um, yeah, it'll take like five minutes, you know, and then it'll be off of my mind, and it'll be no worries, you know. It's like if you got with like farm life, if you got like all these projects, and like you got something that's just going to take five minutes to do, just do it, and then you'll have it be done and it's not on your mind and you're not worrying about it anymore you're not stressing about it and it's done so we're gonna take the five minutes and we're gonna do this um so this is what they look like all nice and sprouted the tails came out and everything their root tails they're a little long i think they're supposed to be like a half inch they're a little longer than a half inch so la vie right so they're gonna go in here like so and if you're not a broke SOB like me, then you'll have a bigger one of these and you can probably do this in one freaking go and then get on with the rest of your life. So you got it closed, you got it ready to go. And then we're just pulsing. Just pulsing. pulsing. You don't want to uh, really chop them up too much. It's probably good. We don't really need to... Uh, chop up the wheat berries so much as we do just need to kind of cut up the roots that are popping out 
they contain the enzymes and hormones that we are really after. And so that's what we're trying to collect and ferment. So just take it and put it all in our jar. Like a regular, regular ass recycled tomato sauce jar. Um, yeah. Get all your stuff out of here. Try and get all those little uh, chopped up root pieces. Like all this junk. Get that. Toss it in. Okay. Okay, five minutes later. And you have your jar of uh, slightly sliced and diced wheat berry chef um and so now we gotta ferment it so got a jar of water got a jar of our stuff and we're gonna just fill this jar up with water um water is the key here in this fermentation and just gonna it looks like everything's staying down below the water line. Um, with these water-based anaerobic ferments, it's usually pretty key to make sure that all of your plant material stays below the water line, so that way it stays in its anaerobic environment. Um, and uh, if not, if there's anything exposed from the water, that is where any mold um, or fungus uh, can grow. And, um, you know, uh, these are not the microbes you are looking for. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you might need to wait um, to weigh everything down to keep it below the water. Um, in this case, it does not look like that. Um, yeah. Here we go. Everything is staying below the water line. That little bit of a uh, root tip you see floating on top, that's all right. Don't worry about that. That's okay. But like the wheat berries themselves are all below the water line. So that's the end. And um, so we need our breathable lid, which is over here. And um, it looks like bananas chewed a hole in it. <clears throat> so. That's what he does. He's bananas. And he chews on things. So. Your little breathable lid. Your little rubber band. On she goes. You got a nice little. What's the what the hell's that hat that they wear out in the Middle East? It's you got one of them. Um, and then this goes somewhere to ferment for a few days. Um, preferably not in direct sunlight. Um, so a shady spot, not hot, just kind of you know ambient. The ferment goes quicker if the air temp is around like 70-ish degrees. Um, if it's the winter and it's and it's cooler in your in your house in your kitchen, it's going to take longer. Um, if it's summer, it'll take less time. Um, it's like 70-ish in here, so this should only take a day or so. And then um, this. So how we'll tell if, when this is done is. Um, it's really just a, a smell thing. Um, you can it, it starts having a kind of like slightly sweet sour smell, and that's how you know. Um, oh, and this is the long way to do this. Um, this whole process can be. Uh, you can do this. You can get this this exact same. Well, not the exact same. Um, 
this is to make this is making precursor to make the lactobacillus. Uh, the easier way to do this is just taking rice water or rice and washing it in water, straining the rice out, and then the starches and everything else that were on the rice are now in that water, and then you would ferment that much like how we're fermenting this. And what you get at the end of that process would be similar to what we're getting with this process and both work to make lactobacillus. Um, that is a less labor intensive process and can just skip this whole seed sprouting thing and, you know, just get right to this part. Um, and I guess it would have saved three days. Um, but I like this way. So that's that. Um, see you in a couple days. And just to show you where um, I keep the ferment going for the next couple of days, it's going to be in here. Uh, this is my apothecary. Um, and so it's uh, the windows here. And so it gets a little bit of warmth, um, a little bit of light. and uh, But it's not in direct sunlight, which, which I guess is the point that I'm just trying to make. But it's 6 o'clock um, on the evening, the same day. And I just wanted to show you this because this is rad. So this, look at this, see all that, see all that activity? See a bubble? It's doing its thing. Um, the point is, is, so you can smell it now. Well, I mean, I can smell it now and it's starting to smell a little yeasty, um, a little sour. Um, here is the lid. It got so active that it saturated our breathable lid and made a mess here up on our shelf. Um, it got so active in here that it was bubbling up and you can see that it bubbled out and made this all wet. Um, I just wanted to show you that because that's cool. Like that's how active this is. Um, so this might actually be ready to go tomorrow. So I'm going to get um, a gallon of milk. Um, we are going to need a gallon of milk for our next phase in this fermentation process. And um, it is important to keep in mind that the milk you want to get, um, get a low fat or non-fat variety. Um, the greater the fat content in the milk, the greater the return is of curd, um, in the next step. Uh, we are essentially going to be separating the milk into the curd and the whey, um, using this stuff right here. And with a high fat milk, you get a high amount of curd back. So if you're, you know, in it for the curd, Whole milk, but if you're in it for the whey, which is our lab, our lactobacillus serum, um, you want a low fat or non fat milk variety uh, for this next step. But yeah, so th just uh, visual cues. Yeah, this is stuff to keep an eye on. You're going to start seeing it do this as it becomes more active. Cheers.